Have you wanted to get into resin printing, but weren't sure about the price, the mess, or the smell? Well, today I've got an option for you that's really going to be right up your alley. Stick around. Hey, welcome to The First Layer. My name is Richard Cleveland. I am your host here every Wednesday and live stream Saturday night. On today's show, we are taking our first look at the Creality LD002R MSLA printer. Now, you're probably wondering why I said MSLA when you've heard so much about stereolithography. Well, this is pretty much the same thing, only this is masked stereolithography because it uses an LCD to transfer the image layer by layer up through the resin and allows it to cure. So we're going to take a good close look at this machine today, tell you about some of the features that I like, some of the features that, you know, might stand out for other people. First and foremost is the form factor. It's a little bit small. It's not the uh, biggest uh, MSLA printer. It's right on par with the Elegoo Mars. It fits right into that same price range. Um, this is not a sponsored video. I do want to point that out. This machine was sent to me by Banggood. Banggood asked me if I would do a review. I said yes, uh, but all the opinions on today's show are my own, and uh, I really enjoy using this little printer. Once I dialed in the settings for the material I was using, which is the Monocure Rapid Resin Gray, uh, I found that it everything that seemed to work out really good. And I'm going to show you the models I've got in front of me in much closer detail in just a couple of minutes. But first, let's talk about some of the features on this amazing 3D printer. First and foremost, let's talk about the lid. Now, it doesn't have any sort of uh, handles on it, but it is a nice, thick, cast acrylic lid. It, does, it can take a little bit of abuse, um, not that you're going to be throwing it on the floor for any time soon. It's also got a linear rail that it rides up and down on. So it gives it much more stability when it's making its movements on the Z-axis. The build plate uh, is not perforated as you've probably seen on some of the other older models of the first release of this. Uh, the retail build plate is a smooth build plate that does have some uh, polishing to it. Uh, it is an angled build plate. I really like these because it allows the material to flow off when it's coming up and down and out of the uh, material. Whereas my Wanhao Duplicator six or 7 does not have that. Very sturdy. It comes pre-calibrated out of the box. So all you've got to do is take it out of the box, plug it in, put some material in, and away you go. Because this thing is really, really uh, easy to start working with. The other nice thing I like about it is that it has a fume extractor, which has a piece of carbon in it. Uh, so that when it's taking those fumes out of the container or the trapped container, it is filtering them. So you're not getting a really strong odor uh, in the air as I would get with my Wanhao Duplicator 7. Now, this is priced competitively uh, under $300, I believe. We'll uh, double check that pricing for you. But let's take a look at the quality of prints. Now, this machine will go down to as low as 10 microns. The prints in front of me were all printed at 50 microns. And we'll uh, get into those right now. Well, here's the collection of models that I printed. Um, and I didn't pick any of these except for maybe one or two of them. My lovely wife, uh, who works behind the scenes, picked all of them and said, these are ones that we should try on this just because she's interested in doing jewelry, which is something I've never tackled before. So let's take a look at some of these rings that we've done. And you can see that the detail on them is just amazing. This one, not so much. You can't see so much in the light. This one, uh, when you look at it close, it's very, very intricate. Uh, this Celtic knot came out really nice. Really kind of hard to see with my big fingers in the way. Then we have this one that has a little leaf on it. And it again, it's incredibly detailed. Now, I wouldn't go around and wear this jewelry right now. Um, if I were going to do this as a permanent installation, I would probably uh, more than likely do this in a casting resin, take it to uh, somebody who can do um, investment casting and get them to cast me up some rings. None of these are sized to fit me. This one is a series of hearts and you can see that there's a few areas that filled in with 
resin, but for the most part, remember these were done at 50 microns. If I had done these down at a lower um, or a higher resolution, those areas would have been a lot thinner and it would have opened up a lot better. The one that I really like is the skull ring um, that my wife found and I'll just take it off this clip. It's quite a big ring actually. This is one that might fit me. Um, not that I'd ever wear anything so garish, but uh, the you can see that it's hollow inside and it printed absolutely beautiful. Isn't that amazing? That is so, so cool. And there's even detail down the side. It's got a nice wide band. So if you wanted to make this uh, out of silver or pewter or stainless steel or anything like that, and, you wanted, and you're into investment casting, I would say that the Creality LD002R is right up your alley. If you're just wanting to get started in doing 3D printing with resins. Now, this little guy is just amazing. This is one of the D&D &D figs that she found online. Um, the detail on this is incredible. Uh, everything from the sword, all of the supports cleaned up really well. You can hardly see any of them on the back there. Um, and this just came out beautiful. This is something I would take and start to paint right away. It's ready for the table. Now, the young lady who fell down, this was a uh, model that I had commissioned quite some time ago uh, by an artist, and I can't remember his name at the moment, but this was supposed to be Betty Page as the Rocketeer. Um, this came out not bad. She was printed on about a 30-degree angle, like so, to minimize the supports. And on the back, uh, I know I'm showing her butt there. Let me sort of cover that up for you. Um, you can see that there's virtually no areas where the supports um, can be seen. There's a, maybe a little bit down here on the boots, but I got to tell you, the way that this came out was just incredible. Very, very nicely done. All of these were, were cleaned using um, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol, uh, a little bit of, um, in the ultrasonic cleaner, I used Mr. Clean. Uh, thanks to Jesse, Uncle Jesse, for that suggestion using Mr. Clean. Works out really, really well. You do have to leave it in there a little bit longer than you would with alcohol. Um, and it's got a pleasant odor to it. And then finally, we have the test model, which was on the card that came with it. Uh, this is the Eiffel Tower. This didn't come out too bad. A little bit of bend, and that's my fault, because when I stuck it into my box that I do all of my curing in, um, this was just touching the lid. It was just a little too tall, so it bent over a little bit, but that's not a big deal. Um, this being the second time that I printed this, the first time I printed it, I didn't have the right settings for the material, and of course, it did not come out nearly as well. So, I gotta say, I really like the way that all of these models came out. I'm really happy with them. What do you get with this printer? Well, right out of the box, you get pretty much everything you need, including a scraper, masks, uh, gloves, an SD card, or actually not an SD card, but a USB thumb drive, which is 16 gigs, which has all of the material on it that you will need for uh, getting this machine up and running. This is run on Cheetubox. I would recommend that you download the latest version because the version of Cheetubox that's on the 16 gig stick is an older version. It does not include the Creality uh, drivers. So that's something that I would certainly uh, get a look at. All right, let's take a look at the menu system. The menu system is pretty straightforward. When it came out of the box, Everything was ready to go in terms of the language, so it was already done in English language. The only thing that threw me off on this printer was that it came with a European plug, um, did not come with a, an American plug, but I have tons of those types of plugs around. It just uses the same type of cable as any uh, computer or computer accessory would use. So let's get into some of the menus that we've got on the front. We have our tools menu way over here. Then we have the system menu and the print menu. If we go into the tools menu, we'll just, there we go. You can see we in there we have manual, 
calibrate, uh, set the Z offset, stop, clean the vat, and then we can go back again. Um, I haven't had to calibrate because the calibration for this was perfect right out of the box. Um, you don't, you shouldn't have to recalibrate this. The factory calibration is actually really good on it. You can move the Z up and down manually if you want. You can set your Z offset. We're just going to get out of that. And now we're going to go into this, the system tools. And you can see here, this is where you would change your language. If you needed service, you can change the volume a uh, little bit about the printer. So if we hit that button. You can see that it is the LD002R. Um, there's its ID and uh, all other pertinent information that if you needed to do anything, that uh, would be what they want would want from you. Now, when you go into the print menu, we're going to put the S the card in back into the side of the machine. I really like the fact that this plugs into the side. It doesn't plug into the back. You don't have to reach around. Um, your USB just plugs right in there, which is great. One of the things I did notice about this when I took the side panel off is that you can add Wi-Fi to this later on down the road. There is a port for Wi-Fi. Uh, whether Creality will put out a Wi-Fi module or not for it, it remains to be seen. But it looks like they've thought ahead, so that might be something they come up with later on. Um, if we go again, we go into that print menu. Let's go with this hand. There, it's now showing the files on the card. So we can see that... We've got the Eiffel Tower file there. We've got a few others, Unnamed Hero, the Celtic Ring, uh, or the Rocket Woman. All of those are on there. All we simply do is press the one that we want. Then we're going to hit the play, and it's going to start up, start to move the material or move the plate down into the vat and um, start your print. We're not going to start a print because we don't have anything in the vat at the moment. And that really is all there is to it. I haven't had any other issues with this. I've noticed that the fans aren't that loud. Um, there's a microphone right over top of this printer. So if you're hearing the fans, I don't find them to be that loud. We've had this thing running overnight uh, and not really noticed it. I think the fans on my other uh, FDM printers are a lot worse. But uh, it does come with a spare FEP film. Everything that you need right out of the box. And the nice and easy thing... They got these two really nice thumb screws to take off the vat. And the thumb screws don't get lost, like I find with my Wanhao. Once you've loosened it, it comes right off, and that is it. It is an all metal vat. It has designations along the back here so you can see how much material you're putting into your machine. When you're changing the FEP film, Follow the directions. It's really important that you follow the directions to get the FEP film uh, loaded up just right. I think they've got a little bit too much grease on the on the spindle here, but um, that's something you can clean off uh, at your leisure. This is all ready to go now, and it is all set for my next print when I decide to print something. So, bottom line, would I buy this machine? Absolutely, I would. I think this is a great entry-level MSLA printer, a masking sterile, stereo lithography printer. This is a resin printer, for those of you that uh, didn't catch that at the beginning. Um, it has a H Ultra HD 2K LCD screen. Again, the linear rail, a uh, extraction fan to extract the fumes. Um, very well-built metal construction all except for the acrylic top, which is a nice thick acrylic top. Not like some of the ones that you'll find on other printers. Um, very sturdy, well-built machine. It's something that I would uh, definitely take a look at. A lot of the forums now are starting to, this machine is starting to show up in. It sells for $279 US. Uh, it's a little over $300 here in Canada. Um, but I really think that this is going to get and I don't do this often, five hot ends out of five for the Creality LD002R. Well, I hope you got something out of today's video. If you did, please leave a like down in the uh, like button down below. Subscribe if you're new to the channel and leave us a comment letting us know if you're interested in MSLA printing or resin printing. 
and uh, we'll be happy to respond to your comments. Until next time, my friends, remember that the first layer is always your foundation to a great print.